do you commence a spiritual year? You begin with a sacrifice and a vow. Many of you come into a year and you are expecting so many great things to happen to you. Meanwhile, you have not made any commitment to God and you are expecting to have output. A yearly sacrifice. And what? Apart from the sacrifice, you vow. And the reason for the vow is that God, oh, if you do this, I will do that. That's how to deal with God. That's how to trans transact with God. And when you make a vow based on the chart that we have seen, that your commitment to God has a spiritual value that is known in the sanctuary of God. Do you get that? It has a value. So there are two things by which you commence a spiritual year. And if you have not started those two things, the year has not begun. There's no new ground upon which you are seeking to move the hand of God. You need to go an extra mile. You know, I told you that the language that spirits understand is the dialect of sacrifice. So on the last day of this fast, for instance, we'll give everybody an opportunity to offer unto God a sacrifice. Now, the reason why we will not say people that can give 10,000 people, no, that's rubbish. You yourself will decide what you are willing to give God because you want to deal with God. That's one. And then you also have the opportunity to make a vow. This vow is not a meal. I don't even need to know what you are doing. But this is how a spiritual year starts. It starts with a sacrifice and with a vow. Is that correct? Now, the vow aspect is what I'm concerned about. Because the word vow there means a commitment. And maybe your vow or your commitment, are you there? Your commitment is that I'm going to keep watches, the watches of prayer to God. That every single day in the coming year, I will keep prayer watches. Then you go and look at your schedule. You do office work from 8 o'clock to this time. You do this on this to this time. If you are going to fulfill your vow, then this is the time that I'm going to be standing on my feet to fulfill my prayer watch. I need to tell us something quickly, quickly. Because the Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? So the measure of the Spirit of God that you see and you experience in your life, the measure of the supernatural you experience in your life is proportionate to your prayer input proportionate is directly proportionate to your prayer input a man that must advance an altar must have a vow that god i want to deal with you and in my dealing with you i am going to be committed to keeping my prayer watches the moment you come up with that decision the regulation around that vow is that if you have come to a point where you want to engage the hand of God by transacting with him using a vow, your fidelity is required. You don't go back on that. And I'm not saying that there is no possibility of you missing one of those your prayer watches. There is a great possibility that you miss your prayer watch if you are still learning. But what you will not do is that you will not abandon your commitment altogether. Some of you miss prayer watches, you miss it for two days, and then after three days, you say, ah, okay, I know. Do. There's no need for you to have started. It means that the human attendant that wants to attend to that altar is not yet convinced that the way of the altar is the way to go. He's not yet convinced. So he's still a child. Let us buy football for him, buy basketball for him. But if you want to become someone that is ready to do business with God, when you take a position, when you make up your mind, you don't go back on your word. Because God wants to be able to depend upon you to stand and keep your prayer watches so that he can begin to do some things on the basis of your commitment. 
I need to show you a few things. Maybe not today. To do the arithmetic. Now that we know the value, the possible value that you might have. Are you there? There are some calculations we can do. Especially when we bring that scripture in compromise with some New Testament scriptures, we can arrive at a calculation that will give you a little insight into the kind of thing you produce when you are, you are faithful to keep your watches, your commitments. The man that must man a vow, a, an altar, must have a vow before God. For as long as I live, oh, this is how it's going to be. If you see how consistent the wizards and the warlocks that maintain altars are, you will know that it is not personal human determination that is behind their commitment. They have transacted with their soul. It's a commitment that binds their soul to Satan. And the average believer is not serious enough to bind his own soul to God. To be available daily to provide commitments that will give God the legitimacy for him to intervene in human affairs. 